Hi everyone, welcome to Smart Alex Coaching. My name is June and I create videos to teach mathematics. Over the past couple of weeks, I've been teaching introductory calculus. And one of the things I noticed among my students was that a lot of them didn't actually have a good understanding of how to apply the chain rule. So what I want to do in this video is to go through some examples and show you the correct technique in how to apply the chain rule. Let's get started. Suppose we're given the question, given y is equal to 2x plus 1 to the power 5, find dy on dx. If we didn't have knowledge of the chain rule, the way to go about this would be to expand 2x plus 1 to the power 5 and then differentiate it term by term using the power rule. But this process can get quite labor intensive and time consuming. So the chain rule helps us to make our processing a lot more efficient. First, we introduce the variable u. We say, let u equal to 2x plus 1, which means that y can now be written as y is equal to u to the power 5. Now, the expression u is equal to 2x plus 1. We can differentiate u with respect to x. du on dx is going to give us 2. We also do the same with y. dy on du is going to be 5u to the power of 4. Now, using the chain rule, we can write dy on dx as dy on du times du on dx. You can see that the du effectively cancels out. But what this allows us to do is we can use this expression and this expression. So dy on du is 5u to the 4, du on dx is 2. So we multiply that together and we're going to get 10u to the 4. Now we're going to replace the u back with the original expression 2x plus 1. So therefore dy on dx is equal to 10 times 2x plus 1 to the power of 4. Let's now look at the second example. This time we have got the expression y is equal to x squared plus 1 to the power 5. Similar process, we introduce the variable u, let u equal to x squared plus 1. So we can now write y is equal to u to the power 5. Same process, we differentiate u, du on dx is going to give us 2x, dy on du is going to give us 5u to the power 4. So we now can write dy on dx as a product of dy on du times du on dx. This is going to give us 5u to the 4 times 2x, which is equal to 10xu to the 4. But we made the substitution that u is equal to x squared plus 1. So therefore, the expression dy on dx, which is pretty much the derivative of x squared plus 1 to the power 5, is equal to 10x times x squared plus 1 to the power 4. The chain rule doesn't only work for polynomial functions. In fact, it works for all functions. So in this example, we're going to look at applying it to the trigonometric function. We're given y is equal to sine x to the power 4, and we want to find dy on dx. This time, we're going to let u equal to sine x, which means we can now write y is equal to u to the power 4 du on dx is equal to cos x, dy on du is equal to 4u cubed. Same thing, dy on dx can be written as a product of dy on du times du on dx. This is going to give us 4u cubed times cos x. But we made the substitution that u is equal to sine x. So this expression can be written as 4 sine cube x cos x. So therefore, the derivative of sine x to the power 4 is equal to 4 sine x cube times cos x. 
Here's another example where we're working with logarithmic and trigonometric function. This time, we're going to let u equal to cos x. This means that we can write y as the log of u. du on dx is going to be equal to negative sine x, whilst dy on du is going to be equal to 1 over u. So dy on dx can be written as dy on du times du on dx, which is going to be 1 over u times negative sine x. But because u is equal to cos x, this is equal to 1 over cos x times negative sine x. Now, if you know your trigonometric identity, you will recognize that negative sine x over cos x is in fact equal to negative tan x. So the derivative of log cos x is in fact equal to negative tan x. In this last example, we want to show you that the chain rule is not limited to two steps. In fact, it can be repeated as many times as required. In this last question, we've got several nested functions. y is equal to e to the sine of x squared plus 1. So first, we're going to introduce the variable v. Let v equal to x squared plus 1. And we're going to say u is equal to sine x squared plus 1 which can be written as sine v. And y is going to be equal to e to the u. Now, we're going to differentiate each variable separately. dv on dx is going to be equal to 2x. du on dv is going to be equal to cos v. And dy on du is going to be equal to eu. Now, dy on dx can be written as a product of dy on du times du on dv times dv on dx. And you can see that the du's and the dv's will cancel out. Putting this together, we're going to have that being equal to e to the u times cos v times 2x. We're now going to replace the variables u and v and write it in terms of x and this is going to give us e sine x squared plus 1 times cos of x squared plus 1 times 2x. So tidying everything up we have got dy on dx is equal to 2x times cos x squared plus 1 times e to the sine of x squared plus 1. Complicated expression, but that's the correct answer. Thank you so much, guys, for watching this video. We hope that you enjoyed it and most importantly, learned something from it. If you did find it helpful, please help us by clicking like below, subscribe and share it with others. If you have any suggestions or feedback, please leave your comments below. Your positive encouragement really means a lot to us. And we hope to see you guys all again in the next video. Bye for now.